Hey, this is Nat, and we're off our couch once again in St. Augustine, Florida for another grand celebration of Nights of Lights. We'd like to thank floridashistoriccoast.com for access and resources to the additional details provided in this video. And we are here for opening day of the 29th annual Nights of Lights. The award-winning holiday lights display named by National Geographic in 2011 and 2012 as one of the top 10 holiday light displays in the world. Nights of Lights features more than 3 million lights decorating the historic district of St. Augustine. This sparkling seasonal display is happening from November 19th to January 31st, 2023. Nights of Lights is a must experience event for the droves of visitors who flock to St. Augustine, and that includes us too. Plus, we are constantly exploring this beautiful city, so be sure to subscribe and keep joining us on the couch, please, for more fun and history in St. Augustine. As always, there are many ways to enjoy this beautiful holiday display, plus there's lots to enjoy beyond the lights also, which we'll get to in a bit, but we'll focus on the lights first. As I just stated, there are many ways to see the lights. You can take advantage of a boat tour from the water or a helicopter tour that will allow you to look down upon the millions of lights. Riding the train or trolley throughout the historic streets is festive and fun, and just traveling by foot is a great way to explore the city during this event. A free park and ride shuttle service makes it easy. The park and ride service is available on peak days when traffic and parking is very, very difficult. You can take advantage of the free park and ride shuttle service on November 25th and 26th, the Friday and Saturday of Thanksgiving weekend, the first three Saturdays in December, and the five days following Christmas, Monday, December 26th through Friday, December 30th, from 1 to 11. Uh, you can park your car and receive a complimentary shuttle ride into the historic downtown. And we will place the link to the website in the description box so you can have all of the parking details and information handy. There are a limited number of free parking spaces. The historic downtown parking garage is available. There is also metered parking, which is free after enforcement enforcement hours. There are also private parking lots and we did see parking prices ranging from $10 to $25 in these lots. Some are cash and credit, um, some take credit card only. And again, I'll have links to the parking information in the description box so your start to the Nights of Lights event is as smooth as possible. So the grand celebration does kick off at 4 p.m. with Light Up Night in front of the Leitner Museum and St. Augustine City Hall, Showtime USA, a singing and dancing performing group, brings in the season with a variety of holiday favorites. The music and celebration continues at 5.30 p.m. as the All-Star Orchestra entertains the cheerful and excited crowd with swing and big band tunes within the gazebo of the Plaza de la Constitucion. Crowds are gathered right now in anticipation of the tree lighting at 6.30 p.m. This gorgeous tree comes all the way from North Carolina. And at 6.30, the countdown begins as the switch to nice of lights is flipped to illuminate the city. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. And no, no, they didn't forget the rest of the lights. <laughs> There's actually a second countdown this year. Here we go again. Beautiful. Uh, we lost a tree for a few seconds, uh, but everything is back now and brightly shining, and the 29th annual Nights of Lights has officially started. There are nearly 20 blocks of the historic district decorated for the Nights of Lights season, and we want to show you some of our beloved spots. And we're already at the Plaza de la Constitution, so let's mention that first and take a look at the lights and the bright lit tree during a less crowded time period. This is the next day, and this is a perfect spot for pictures and selfies within the gazebo or in front of the tree. And just a beautiful place to walk or sit under the canopy of these gorgeous lights. 
the Parks Division of the City of St. Augustine places all of the lights and the oak trees within the plaza. A tradition was started where one red bulb was placed by one of the employees for his daughter to find, and that tradition continues on. I had the incredible opportunity to speak with the owner of Angels in the Architecture, Mr. Chris Fitz. His company is responsible for taking care of the lighting for the city, Flagler College, the University of Florida properties like the Governor's House, for example, and 80% of the merchants here in St. Augustine. A few years ago, he took on a tradition of hiding the red bulb and it moves every week. <laughs> the good news is that there may be a clue. Sometimes hints are placed on the Angels and the Architecture Facebook page. So if you're looking for a challenge, see if you can be one of the few that locates the red bulb. And if you do, tell me please, because I'll need help, lots of help. <laughs> so we're gonna move across the street to the Bayfront. On the way, we're passing Casa Reina, a restaurant specializing in the flavors of Mexican, Latin American, and Florida coastal cuisine. We have yet to eat here. If you have, tell us about it in the comments, please. The menu sounds wonderful, and the building is just beautiful this holiday season. Okay, so we are now at the Bayfront, and there's the Bridge of Lions in the distance, just shining brilliantly. You know, this area was flooded not too long ago uh, due to Tropical Storm and Hurricane Nicole. When speaking with Mr. Fitz, owner of Angels in the Architecture, I learned after the flooding they had just four days to get the entire North Bank and South Bank lighting fixed for the start of Nights of Lights, uh, because they were already done a week ahead of time before the start date for nice lights and then when the coal came through they had to work diligently working around the clock so we could all enjoy the beauty and sparkle this evening walking alongside this bay it is just beautiful and there's nothing like looking at the glow of the lights on the water Across the street is the Teeny Martini Bar uh, within the Casablanca Inn. We'll get closer, uh, even though you really can't miss it from across the street. Every year, I'm in awe of all of the lights, decor, and trees on this one building. Next door is the Hilton. This is another great spot to film from across the street because there are just so many lights, so much decor to try to capture all in this one shot. This is just a really great hotel to walk around and explore during nights of lights. There's just so much to see and it always seems different from year to year. Many, many, many wonderful photo ops here at the Hilton Hotel, including the Grinch. Maybe it's just me, but it seems like the Grinch is just as popular as Santa Claus now. I, I don't know. You can tell me if that's true or not. <laughs> we really hope that you're enjoying these spots along with us. And if you have some favorites of your own, um, definitely leave those in the comments. Uh, we want to hear about your favorite places to enjoy the lights at during Nights of Lights. We have just a few more places we want to talk about. There's just so many. Uh, we all love the Leitner Museum though. My daughter calls it a lighted maze. Uh, I just call it beautiful. The idea of Knights of Lights is inspired by the traditional Spanish practice of displaying a white candle in windows during the Christmas holidays. The white candle is symbolic of the Spanish making room in their homes and hearts for Jesus prompted by the biblical story of the birth of Jesus. Whenever I see the beauty and elegance of the Leitner Museum, I'm easily reminded of this tradition and the inspiration for this dazzling and magical annual event. Flagler College is just across the street. There's some construction going on with the building, yet it is still shining splendidly. Many of these buildings are old, uh, as you probably already know if you're familiar with the extensive history of St. Augustine. So I learned from speaking with Mr. Fitz, the owner of Angels and the Architecture, any lights above 20 feet remain on the buildings to protect the structure. So they are not removed after the end of Nights of Lights. Also unrelated to Nights of Lights, but very, very cool also, uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of angels within the architecture of these historic buildings. Something else for us to be more aware of when we look upon the amazing architecture and history of these buildings. As Mr. Fitz explained to me, hence the name of his company, Angels in the Architecture. <laughs> so we are now at the Renaissance Hotel. 
during the day. Uh, I like to view this one during the day or dusk. There are some that are better during the day, in my opinion, of course, and then some I prefer at night. If you do stop by at night, it's still beautiful though, so you don't have to worry about missing out or anything. There's just so much to see. Absolutely fantastic photo opportunities here. I love these nutcrackers, especially the eyes. Uh, we saw these also at the Hilton Hotel. Uh, this is just a dazzling and engaging display. One of our favorites and a must when we attend Nights of Lights. Across the street is Ripley's Believe It or Not, the original Ripley's Believe It or Not. Uh, did you know that this is the only Ripley's that Robert Ripley actually stepped in uh, when it was a hotel still and not the museum yet? Even though Ripley's is a cross from the Renaissance Hotel, we left and came back later because we love viewing these decorations at night. The arch is my absolute favorite. Uh, feels like an entranceway to Christmas. If Christmas, the holiday was a destination. Now this next one took me by surprise because it's not a place. Uh, it's actually a sheriff car uh, blanketed in lights. Normally when I see a sheriff car near me with the lights on, it's a not so merry feeling. <laughs> but uh, this is a merry feeling. Uh, I love this. So those are some of our favorite sites and places during the Nights of Light season. We've asked before and we'll ask again. Share your favorites in the comments, please. One more tidbit I'd like to share, some more behind the scenes information concerning how all of this sparkling radiance happens. Mr. Fitz and his crew, who are responsible for so many of the lights we enjoy nightly after their daytime shifts, they patrol the historic downtown district for two to three hours, handling maintenance, replacing bulbs, just making sure everything is just glorious and creating an experience that is just a joy to partake in. Mr. Fitz explained to me it's a family legacy, a labor of love, and a commitment to keep the lights shining. The same commitment that drove the efforts to restore the lights in that four day time period after Hurricane and Tropical Storm Nicole. Just amazing and a must experience and a must see event as far as we're concerned. And while you're enjoying the night, taking in the lights, there's even more to enjoy beyond the lights. Here's just a few of the activities available, activities that we enjoy besides the lights. We did enjoy tasting new flavors at the distilleries in St. Augustine. St. Augustine Distillery has a gorgeous photo-worthy tree out front. In addition to a brand new spirit sampled by our official spirit tasting master, London, this is a limited edition Curacao cast finished bourbon. This bourbon is aged for five years and is part of the distillery's Explorer series. There is also a cognac aged for five years as well, the cognac cast finished bourbon, which is first in their Explorer series. London is enjoying both. The bourbon has more of a spicy tingle to it, while the cognac has a smooth flavor. Also in time for the holidays is a hot buttered rum cocktail mix, the perfect mixer for their pot distilled rum. Then at Citygate Distillery, a new spirit is here in time for the Nights of Light season, Peppermint Moonshine. Official Tasty Master London enjoyed this one as well. Also recommends the Apple Pie Moonshine as a tasty and appropriate spirit to get you into that holiday spirit as well. For those colder nights, I uh, can't really say cold. So far it's just dropped into the 50s and that's not too bad. Uh, that's the Ohio in me talking. Uh, but for those colder nights, you can grab a hot chocolate as you enjoy the lights. Kookaburra has hot chocolate. Uh, they are right across from the Plaza de la Constitution. Kilwins has hot chocolate as well and other sweet goodies, of course, to snack on while walking and enjoying St. George Street and the lights. Augie's Mini Donuts has hot chocolate and Mini Donuts, of course. They are also on St. George Street and we picked up Mini Donuts and hot chocolate to enjoy during the evening. Speaking of St. George Street, while walking this popular street, uh, we did encounter snow. Yeah, crazy, right? <laughs> and then we encountered lots more snow and even an elf on the rooftop at Augie's Draft Room, a family-friendly sports bar and self-serve tap house. Uh, they are making and it snowed nightly at 7 p.m. up until January 23rd. 
Uh, be sure to check them out on Instagram too for any updates on the forecast for massive snow showers. So that's our experiences of Nights of Lights beyond just seeing the lights. Uh, we want to hear more from you, of course, and we'd love to hear your plans for this season of Nights of Lights, which is happening until the end of January. Next video, join us back in Siesta Key, Florida, please, to check out a different side and a different vibe of the famous Siesta Beach. We're at SS.12, often called Crescent Beach, enjoying the calmness and beauty of this beach. We'd love for you to join us off the couch for a walk on the beautiful powdery sand, and we'll be enjoying more beaches here in Siesta Key. So subscribe, please. I'll meet us back in Siesta Key. As always, we want to express our thanks for this experience. We'd like to thank Florida's HistoricCoast.com for the expertise and assistance with this video. We'd like to thank Mr. Chris Fitz of Angels in the Architecture for sharing his love of St. Augustine, the city's history, and behind the scenes knowledge of the workings behind this incredible event. And we would also like to thank all of you for joining us off the couch, for all of the likes, the views, comments, and feedback. Thank you so much. Without your support, these adventures are not possible. Until next week, click on the video to see another one of our experiences. Thanks for watching.